Welcome to the Marvelous Designer 2025 New Features Tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be exploring the brand new keyframe animation feature, along with the updated animation editor UI that's been improved to support this new workflow. Let's dive in and see what's new. In the 2025 version, Add Animation option has been added to the top left corner of the animation editor window. Through this menu, you can now add keyframes for various elements such as fabric, pattern, avatar, pin, wind controller, and simulation properties. To demonstrate how this works, I've prepared an avatar with a walk-in-place animation already applied. You can find and apply the same motion data by clicking the library button in the upper right corner. Then go to Avatar, Mail, Connect Asset, and download the Cat Walk in Place animation. Now let's take a look at the Fabric option in the Add Animation menu. On the Fabric option, you will find the fabrics you applied for the garments you created. I will choose Vest. With the Fabric option, you can set keyframes for both material properties and physical properties of the fabric. In this tutorial, I'll focus on setting keyframes for the base color of the material, which you can find in the property editor on the right. All items with a plus icon can be set up with keyframes. I'm going to change the garment's color every 30 frames using keyframes. Manually adding a keyframe each time can be a bit tedious, so let's enable the auto keying button located in the toolbar of the animation editor. Now, every time you change the garment's color, a keyframe will be automatically added, making the process much smoother and faster. This seems enough, so I'll go ahead and drag the right end of the layer to extend it. Press the play button to see the result. Next, let's take a look at the Pattern option in the Add Animation menu. When you click on Pattern, you'll see a long list of pattern parts for each section of the garment. To identify exactly which part each name refers to, you can click on a pattern piece in the 3D window and check its name in the Information section of the Property Editor on the right. To make things easier to recognize, I'll go ahead and rename the pattern to something more descriptive. Feel free to rename yours as well to whatever makes the most sense for you. Now let's go back to the Pattern section in the Add Animation menu and add the pattern layer using the new name we just assigned. When you click the arrow on the left side of the added layer, it expands to reveal a section called Index. In the Index, you can choose a different fabric and set keyframes for it. Let's go to the library in the top right corner and import one of the fabrics from the Connect Asset Store. Make sure to enable the Auto Keying button. Now, when you select the newly added fabric from the index, a keyframe will be automatically created. Now, I'm going to adjust the keyframe I just set and move it to the desired frame on the timeline. Once that's done, let's press the play button to preview the result. Next, let's take a look at the third option, the pin category. There are two ways to set keyframes for pins. One is by applying them to a static mesh, and the other is by applying them to an animated mesh. Let's start by looking at how to set keyframes on a static mesh first. We will create a scene where a towel is hanging on a hanger and then blows away in the wind. First, we'll add pins to the parts of the towel that we want to keep attached. To do this, hold down the W key and click with the left mouse button. This will create a pin at the selected point. After placing all the pins, right-click and select Attach All Pins to Avatar to fix the towel to the hanger. 
Now, if we run the simulation, you'll see that the towel is properly hanging on the hanger. There is currently a collision thickness set between the towel and the hanger, so let's change that value to zero to make the towel simulates closer to the hanger. Click the hanger and set the skin offset to zero. And then, go select the towel set the additional thickness to zero. Next, click Add Animation at the top of the Animation Editor, and select Pin. Here you'll see the list of pins you've created. To make the pin animation easier to manage, let's rename each pin to something more recognizable. Click on each pin, then go to the Name section in the Property Editor on the right, and enter the name you want. Once all pins are renamed, go back to Add Animation, Pin, and add them to the timeline as layers. Now let's set keyframes so that the pins detach one by one, starting from the left as the wind begins to blow. I will add the wind layer and set the keyframe to be off in the beginning and be activated later. Now go ahead and enable the auto keying button. With the activate button turned on in the pin layer, go to the frame where you want the pin to fall, then turn off activate to set the keyframe. All right, let's start recording. As the wind starts to blow, the pins detach one by one. Now let's move on to the second method, applying pin animation to an animated mesh. In this example, we'll attach a receipt to the hand of a walking avatar and have it drop while the avatar is walking. First, let's create a pin on the receipt and attach it to the avatar's hand. Hold down the W key and click on the spot where you want to place the pin. Then, right-click and select Attach Pin to Avatar. To check if the pin is attached correctly, run the simulation. The pin is now following the avatar's hand nicely. Let's press record to first simulate the scene with the pin still attached. Once the recording is complete, we'll go ahead and add the pin layer from Add Animation and start setting the keyframes. Move to the frame where you want the pin to detach, set the deactivate state, and add a keyframe. Unlike with static meshes, when setting pin keyframes on an animated mesh, you need to first record the simulation with the pin attached. Go ahead and re-record just that section of the animation. If the pin behaves incorrectly during recording, go to an earlier frame, right-click the pin, select Attach Pin from Avatar, and then reattach it by clicking Attach All Pins to Avatar to fix the issue. Press Record again and you'll see that the pin animation has been successfully applied. Now let's take a look at the wind section. We'll try applying wind to a walking avatar. First, add the wind controller layer from Add Animation, and then make sure to check Show Wind Controller at the top of the 3D window. By default, Unlimited Bound is enabled, but to make the wind controller easier to see, let's go ahead and uncheck it. Next, Click the scale icon on the right side of the controller and adjust its size. Then, move it to your desired position. Press the 5 key to switch to top view and reposition the wind controller accordingly. In the animation editor, we'll try setting keyframes by adjusting the transform's position and rotation values. If you click the Parent Keyframe button at the top of the Transform section, 
All the dependent child keyframes will be set together automatically. We'll move the wind controller in a clockwise direction around the avatar and set keyframes along the way. You can right click on the keyframes to copy and paste. You can right click on a keyframe and choose from constant, linear, or cubic interpolation options. For this example, I'll go with the cubic setting. Now let's recheck the unlimited bound option so that the entire scene is affected by the wind. Then, set keyframes for the strength value to gradually increase the wind intensity. Once that's done, go ahead and start the recording. Finally, let's take a look at the simulation properties section. When you add the simulation property layer from Add Animation, you'll see a message saying it can only be used if the simulation quality is set to custom. So first, let's switch the simulation quality to custom. Now, the simulation property layer is activated. In this section, you can set keyframes for two parameters, gravity and air damping. Increasing the gravity value causes the garment to rise upward. Increasing air damping slows down the fabric's movement. Let's first reset the values to their defaults, then set a keyframe at frame 0. Next, change air damping to 500 and gravity to 9800, and move to your desired frame to add another keyframe with the updated values. To create a smoother transition, Let's change the keyframe interpolation to cubic. Now click the record button to simulate and check the result.